Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overall Tutorials in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. .1. In this video we continue to design a single stage to orbit space plane and the last episode left me a little bit frustrated to be honest. I think I approached things in the wrong direction. We went a little bit too complicated and I feel like we should start simple and use all the cheats, well, all the, all the things that we can get away with first and then try and make it a little bit more legitimate along the way. I was trying to start with a super legitimate and then introduce little uh, tweaks that will make it a little bit easier, but I think we should just start with an SSTO that takes advantage of everything we can take advantage of and then work from there instead. So, uh, the first thing we can take advantage of is uh, these tanks. We left it at default tanks, or, um, yeah, we left it at default, not even, oh, this, these are cryogenic for some reason. Okay, so, the first thing we can do is change it to balloon cryo. And uh, somebody noted that the, the dry mass of the tanks, uh, the mass fraction was worse than that of the space shuttle external tank. Uh, which is unnecessary. Uh, we can deal with that by making it balloon cryo. It's still not the space shuttle external. Well, it's pretty close to a space shuttle external tank, to be honest. Uh, so it's right around that level. And whether that's legit or not is an uh, open question, uh, because after all, we are we we have to have heat shielding. We got all these tiles on. We can't use spray on foam or anything like that. So, so it is a little bit dodgy. We'll add some MLI layers though, but we'll pump up the utilization all the way. Like I said, we'll we'll just take advantage of everything we can. The ML, MLI layers aren't going to hurt very much. Um, so balloon cryo and balloon cryo. And again, utilization, and also on this tail tank. Now you'll notice I filled it all up with uh, hydrolocks all the way. And that's because the other thing we can get away with is, let's just not have the jets for now. Let's do it the easy, dirty way. And that's just to have the RS-25 and one RS-25 alone. So... There it is. Now we can't have it sticking out like this. It doesn't have heat tolerance to speak of. This is the like blowing up in room temperature kind of deal, which I don't understand. But uh, so we'll have to have some sort of body flap down here to protect it. And this tank, uh, we, we should just get rid of that. That's probably heavier than it needs to be. So we'll put it on directly here, like so. All right, another thing I noticed was the landing gear. Now we can see uh, 160 tons, right? Let me take off the landing gear for a sec. That's more than eight tons of landing gear. They've sized the landing gear completely wrong. I mean, I guess they must be going by the cube of the scale or something, because like this is unreasonably heavy landing gear, eight tons, 8.5 tons. So, we're going to try and use the B9 landing gear, but it's very bouncy. Uh, so we use this heavy duty landing gear. You can see the base mass of the landing gear we were using is 0.46, and we basically doubled its size. But I think instead of doing the square of the mass, uh, they went with the cube of the mass. And so it'll be eight times, and so that ended up 3.2 each or something like that, because we were going the uh, factor of two up. So. Yeah, that's, that's, I mean, the tires, still, it's sort of more, I mean, it's just the air that fills the volume, so, I don't know about that. The, the scaling on those with tweak, tweak scale is uh, a little bit too dodgy. We were just using the medium one. Uh, so, I'll just go with this heavy-duty one, which starts out at 0.11, it's way small here, obviously, but... Uh, let's go up by a factor of two. Let's, oh, is that a factor of two? Yeah, okay. Well, we'll do that. Let's see. That ends up being, it's also by the cube, I think. But it ends up being a reasonable mass, at least. So we'll do that. And we'll, uh, 
copy these over here and hope these work out for us. Always attached to the body, of course, not the wing. They do still have a bulky sort of thing going. No avoiding that. Uh, there is uh, one that has the bulk facing in, doesn't it? Oh no, that's adjustable landing gear. Max safe load 384 tons. Well, so we've got some room to work with. Speaking of which, if you notice Skylon, it's really, really long and thin. And that's to limit the amount of drag. You don't really want bulky. Right? For a space plane, you want to minimize the drag and get as much fuel within a very slender profile as possible. Unfortunately, we don't have the cockpits. Ideally, we would, and I haven't resized these or fixed them yet, uh, we would have the hypersonic front section, and this will be a very slender sort of body. It won't look like um, the shuttle, per se, because it's uh, with the shuttle, increasing drag is not a problem, because that's, that's really all they want. Uh, the, shuttle. the shuttle is supposed to come back down and have a lot of drag as it comes back down. And going up, it goes through the atmosphere so quickly it doesn't really matter. But with a space plane, we are not going through the atmosphere really, really quickly. And we want to reduce drag as much as possible. So we want something more like this profile or even this reusable pod profile would be better than having something quite so thick. But... As it is, we can still make the body longer, so I type HL up here, and we can add uh, extra universal body sections. Incidentally, scaling these is a bit dodgy, like when I press scale here, I think it's got one of those things where at least the scaling factor, I think realism overhaul is doing one thing and tweet scale is doing another, so it's... I. I, I would not recommend touching that until that gets resolved. Um, we'll still do balloon cryo. Let's put the back end on and fill that up. And we're going to put another one. We could get rid of the cargo bay for now, but I don't think the cargo bay is that heavy. It's two tons. Um, we'll leave it be for now. Okay, and we'll up the utilization as well. Well, now we're getting to uh, good Delta Vs, or good enough Delta Vs, but we don't have enough wing, which comes to the other little thing that we're going to do. Really, if you were going to launch something like this, you would probably use a rocket sled. You wouldn't use the RS-25. You'd probably throw up the RS-25 right at the end or something. And you have some sort of rocket sled or catapult. You know, uh, on carriers, planes use catapults. Our rudder is messed up for some reason. Let me just fix that quickly. But yeah, you'd use something like that in order to uh, launch it. Instead of having it use its own engine thrust. But... We don't have something like that right now. So we will take advantage at least of uh, the runway lip. The end of the runway where the land dips down, we're going to be taking advantage of that. We're not going to be able to rotate off of the runway uh, directly because we won't have enough wing. But we're not going to put enough wing. We're just we're going to put enough wing to get some lift, but not enough to actually lift off of the runway. Uh, we're going to rely on the thrust of the engine to actually get us up, uh, which will be feasible because this is going to have a lot of thrust even if we throw it down. So that is going to be another little thing. Okay, so uh, somebody had noted that I had the uh, utilization down to one here, so that's why we couldn't put extra fuel in. I don't know if it's reasonable to put hydrolocks in here, but I guess we might as well. That gets us a little bit more. Let's see what Far has to say about our stability. Okay, uh, so we've got this pitch up angular momentum. That's all to do with the the vertical stabilizer. Uh, is that better at higher speeds though? Not really. Oh, uh, by Mach one, but that's a little bit too long. Let me see if moving this forward helps now, or whether it doesn't. So back to point 0.4, let's say. That makes things worse. Okay. 
I'm not sure why it wants such a gap between the center mass and center of lift, but that yaw number is still, well, yaw roll coupling. It's not great. Huh, apparently it wants less rudder. Maybe it has something to do with the position of this. No. Well, it works at Mach 1. Oh, no, that's Mach 0.1. It works at Mach 1 as well. 0.5? Okay. Uh, how is it at Mach 2? At altitude. Okay, we've got a bit of a pitch issue there, but we're probably going to be a little bit higher. Still a bit of an issue. Mm, will increasing the size of this help? Yeah, it does. Okay, well, then we'll have that bigger. Oh, and then we've got the yaw roll thing down there. Okay, but we'll take what we can get right now. Still, that center mass and center lift look weird to me. But we can do other things. For instance, we could increase the thickness of the wing root here. And the reason for that is that will increase the capacity of this tank if we should want more delta V. So let's do some of that. Uh, not the width of the wing root. The thickness of the wing root. So that will increase our delta V somewhat. We can also add a little bit of fuel into this little bit. And there we go. All right, so now we've got a little bit more fuel in there. Wait, remove tanks, add tanks, okay. And we could probably make this one through thicker too. Uh, last thing we can do is just make them lighter. 0.8 is still stronger than the supersonic level. It'll lighten up our wing a little bit. You could go even further, but let's just not for now. 0.8 mass strength multiplier. I feel like I should be able to get away with less vertical stabilizer than that. So regardless of what Mechjeb, not Mechjeb, Far tried to say to me. I'm gonna go lower. You you might note that uh, Skylon has a really small vertical stabilizer. The reason for that is because it's got its body sort of has its own momentum going. Its uh, own yaw inertia. Okay. Well, now we have nine thousand four hundred and seventeen meters per second, but we've got a few other issues to think about. Uh, first of all, we don't have any RCS, so we're gonna put some RCS in in this tank up here in the nose and we need RCS thrusters that are properly shielded which has always been a little bit of a problem here they don't really want to give me RCS thrusters that are properly shielded basically it's just these guys it used to be something like this uh, RCS port would have better shielding because it's conformal and everything but they've uh, reduced that as well these conformal ones used to have the 2000 Kelvin skin t max temp, but for some reason that's gone. Same with this RCS pod. I like this RCS pod though, so we're gonna use it. I don't know if this actually has built in RCS, I doubt it. Well, it says RCS disabled. Let's see... Engine. Okay, well, it's got built in RCS, it thinks. I guess we can try that out. MMH and NTO will be fine. I would really like to have, you know, Hydrolox RCS, but that I will have to instruct you upon at some other point. I accidentally put Hydrolox instead of the MMH because I really want that. Um, this will be too much. You can see our Delta V just took a huge hit. Uh, what we really want is maybe... Mm, uh, this is equal numbers, so that makes it easy. It's 50-50. Let's go 540 for now. And I want these thrusters in the back using the same. Okay. Alright. Yeah, engine flap to protect the engine. 
Well, we should just keep it the same mass strength. Okay, we're back down to 9,000. I would like a straight up 9,500 to be honest. Maybe I can sneak some tank into the cargo bay. Yeah, why not? Um, while we're here, <laughs> we'll see. Let I, I want the first uh, run to actually get us to orbit. Darn it! Let's just put a balloon tank in. It's in the cargo bay. You can't argue with that. This is a different balloon steel. Uh, you know, we'll have it aluminum lithium. I hope that's not what that what that is. That would be the same as the spatial external tank. Seems heavier though, but actually, uh, for its size, physical size, you see this this one is a six meter tank. It goes all the way up uh, back to here, and it has less volume than this tank. Oh no, it has about the same. Still, impressive. We'll have it use this tank last, just so we can see what our payload capacity would have been. Yeah? Doesn't stick out the bottom. Okay. So very good. You can put a 5 di a meter diameter thing in there, which is pretty good. We should make sure that's RS25D slash E. Hopefully the... That didn't change the delta V at all. Is that right? <laughs> uh, that doesn't seem right to me, but... Well, I mean, it's mainly about thrust. Actually, since it's mainly about thrust, maybe we shouldn't go D slash E. I mean, do we need more thrust? I guess in certain phases of flight. Okay. So, here we go. This is no longer SSTO 1. I think we'll call this SSTO 0. Okay, so you get this sort of bounciness. If you need to, you can use launch clamps on the back here. Don't put them on the front because otherwise the wings will hit on the way out. But put them on the back if the, um, the B9 landing gear is too bouncy. We have the tiniest wing ever, but that's part of our plan now. So here we go, throttle up. Uh, we've got atmospheric autopilot. Uh, we want, actually want to throttle down as much as possible. I want these little guys to focus only on pitch. I should have done that earlier. And again, I'm not even rotating earlier. We'll wait until the end of the runway and then rotate. And pull up. Uh, okay, this is not working right. Eek. I think the back control surface is maybe unnecessary <laughs> or counterproductive. I don't know. We'll see. We might need a little bit more lift. This might be too little wing after all. But one thing I'll uh, note is that we're accelerating, we're going up, and we don't have a thrust weight ratio of 1 yet. Right, so our wing is doing something. Uh, it is providing lift. Otherwise, we would not be able to do this. And our body lift, if there's body lift, probably not much though. I'd say maybe go to 50 degree pitch here. As long as the velocity keeps going up. So now it's basically a rocket. I mean, so this is the easy way. You can see why it's the easy way. And the question then becomes, you know, can some other configuration get you better results? Can it get you better payload capacity? Can it get you um, some other better performance? Uh, save you from having to pay for very expensive balloon cryo tanks, perhaps? Something like that. But yeah, I would consider this the baseline sort of deal. And I probably should have just started off with that right away in the previous video. We're actually interested in comparing our stage time to our time to apoapsis. I didn't have stage time in this display down here, so we'll keep that up. 
Right now we're still building time to apoapsis and trying to get to space. Obviously a very efficient sort of trajectory is necessary for this. But you're never going to be able to point directly at the prograde vector because you're trying to use some of your lift. So we'll start pitching down here. I don't want more than a minute of time to apoapsis. And we do need to go horizontal after all. Watch that delta V. I would not want the time to apoapsis to go down until it's half of our remaining stage time. But I don't, uh, so when the stage time is two minutes and it's one minute, that'll be fine. Then we can allow the time to apoapsis to go down and also throttle down maybe. Okay, we've got sort of a residual roll here. Our aerodynamic surfaces are no longer able to sort of check that. So now we turn on the RCS thrusters. Make sure we've got roll control. I'm gonna switch from atmospheric all pod to SAS now. Okay, that's too much time to apoapsis. Let's throttle down. Probably need to pitch up a little bit more just to make sure we get into space. It is pretty tight right now, even with that tank in the bay, so... Remember that the RS-25 only has one ignition, so we're going to have to use all of its fuel at one go. Somehow. Uh, we may end up being a little bit too low at one end. We'll see. No, we've got... Potentially an apoapsis of 140 coming up. But things are gonna start happening really quickly here. I have to pitch down to control that vertical speed, otherwise we'll have a very badly lopsided orbit. And it's still pretty badly lopsided. Okay, well, we got 542 by 136, so we probably should be steeper initially and shallower later. Okay, well, let's see about coming down while we're here. So we've got a periapsis here, which is fine. That's probably where I want the periapsis anyway. Let's get over to apoapsis. We might need like fuel cells or something for power. Keep that in mind. We're going to use the RCS to deorbit. Still pretty high up here, 450 kilometers. Okay, retrograde. Can just switch the engine off and then throttle up using MechJeb. MechJeb lets you use the RCS to. Uh, let's use the throttle for the RCS as long as there's no engine on. Of course, deorbiting with RCS does take a while. Probably should have started a little bit earlier. But we certainly have enough MMH and NTO, so there's a. Benchmark for you. Um, let's set the rule to be you want 20 units of each, 20 units of MMH, 20 units of NTO per ton of dry mass that you're trying to bring down. Maybe that's a good way to go. And that's just the part where you're using the RCS to get you back down, of course. We have to take into account that we were starting in a very low orbit, so. Uh, the additional margin we you see that we have up there would be necessary for a higher orbit. So much like the Shinkansen shuttle, um, this is very light. We see 27 tons, right? Um, it doesn't have as much surface area as my Shinkansen does. Uh, so it's probably not going to get in as much drag. It's probably going to come in a little bit hotter. Uh, Yep, so it might go a little bit long compared to what we've got here. My Shinkansen shuttle uh, has more surface area, but uh, I don't think it's quite as long as this, nor is its body nearly as wide. Its uh, its body is about 4 meters, this is 5. Well, it can fit a 5 meter tank in the bay, so... Yeah, 
pretty pretty difficult to get something like this down to 27 tons to be honest um, since the Shinkansen shuttle was the best I could do with all the maths and that was about the same mass as this and this is much larger physically for some reason both KOS and smart ASS like to do this roll wobble when coming back down not sure why I think it has something to do with the RCS systems itself. Because that's the only thing they really have in common. Well, I don't know actually. Uh, if we take a look at attitude adjustment, it's sort of using a hybrid controller between MechJeb and KOS, so it might actually be using the KOS thing right now. Um, I would like to just caps lock it for now so we don't use too much fuel. At least the RCS on the HL cockpit seems to be working properly, that's nice. So if it's going too far, I take it off of caps lock. This is uh, fuel consumption mitigation method at this point. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. it seems nose heavy. Well, that's not a surprise. When you saw the center mass and center lift in the VAB, it sure seems like it would be nose heavy, huh? But far insisted, so we'll see. We need RCS until the control surfaces can deal with the situation. Which may be a long time, or may not be a long time, we'll see. Well, we see redness in the body, which I really didn't want to see. I mean, they're supposed to be happy tanks with much skin max temp, but that internal temperature made me a little bit worried and I don't know about how they conduct the heat to each other. The cargo bay is happy, but probably the tank inside. <laughs> Who knows about the tank inside? The wing pieces. Of all things, I would expect the nose to be the hottest, but okay, we are running out of fuel, so we did not have enough. Ignore that 20 units per ton thing. <laughs> Uh, I didn't account for how uh, bad our center mass... Again, the center mass was just too far forward. Oh great, now we're gonna be a dart. At least that should keep the engine safe. I don't like the fact that we're yawing off to the side. That's very much not good. One thing I will do is if I see that, I won't ask it to hold as much pitch because it probably prioritizes the pitch over the yaw. And I don't want the yaw to go out of control, but now it's going, doing bad things in roll, so that's just wonderful. <laughs> uh, so I go, okay, well, you don't have to worry so much about the pitch, just try not to go out of control, but if it wants to go out of control, it'll do that anyway. We, our roll is way off. We're too high in the atmosphere for the control surfaces to do a whole lot, to be honest. Just pretend it's doing us turns. <laughs> no, okay, that's that's not good. I mean, technically it's pointing the heat shielded surface to the airstream in all of this role. So, there is that. It is a first test, let's remember. Uh, I don't know, maybe atmospheric autopilot? I doubt it. Oh, well, that'll need my input too, of course. Well, we are slowing down properly. Hmm, don't really need the cockpit overheating indicator at the moment. I doubt it's going to be in trouble at this point. We're slowing down pretty well. Gonna take it off of atmospheric autopilot uh, because I don't want to snap the control surfaces. I'm not even going to control it right now. I mean, one thing we can know for sure is that it should go nose first because the center mass is so far forward that that at least should not be a problem. We also don't seem to have lost our engine, which is nice. I'm still not deliberately controlling it right now. And you can see why with the G-forces. If I was deflecting at the control surfaces, they would probably snap off. 
Okay. Um, now, if the G-force is going down, atmospheric autopilot on. This is in the transonic region where all the drag is. Well, now the drag helps us. So it dampens out the G-forces and makes this controllable now and prevents us from damaging the vehicle. But we're over the ocean. We ended up with all the spinning around and all getting more drag and uh, we're falling short instead of going long. So, ocean landing again. Well, splashdown. Now, what is the stall speed of this? I don't know. I mean, we've got a tiny wing, but it's 27 tons now. It's not like it's trying to lift off of a runway uh, with a full tank or anything. So, it's lighter. It probably has a reasonable stall speed. Far may give a minor stalling indicator, but if you're in the middle of trying to land it, that will probably come too late for you. So we're just going to aim for the normal 70 to 80 meter per second window as far as when we splash down. You'll note that this uh, platform should look vaguely reminiscent. It's the X-37 sort of deal, right? It's not very different from the X-37. So what I'm doing here is I'm observing how it's going down here and how I lose vertical speed as the speed the horizontal speed slows down and judging from that as much best as I can. And we have a splashdown. A little bit higher than the 70 to 80 that I was initially expecting, but the relationship between our horizontal speed and the vertical speed going down suggested that we couldn't really get down to 70 to 80. And we've got this problem where it wants to keep sliding forever, so I try to deflect to present more of my surface to the water, but I don't know how water physics works in stock. You're well, not stock, I mean, in Kerbal Space Program entirely. So we'll just wait. I want to recover this, darn it. It does sort of look like it could be a speedboat of some kind. Put the engines on top and have it be one of those ecranal planes. Okay, okay, I don't have enough patience, so I'll just revert it. Okay, so a quote-unquote successful mission. Let's review the tanks. We are all the way down to like a 2%, even less than a 2% dry mass, which... Uh, it's... It's not really legit. <laughs> so... That's that's the that's the problem here. And uh, now is adding jet engines going to somehow help that? That's tough to say. Remember, we can only really get the uh, 1500 meters per second max from any sort of air breathing thing uh, because we don't have scramjets in here. We do have somebody asked about ramjets. We do have a uh well, the rapier can do it as well, but there is the CR2 ramjet somewhere around isn't there? Let me just type it up. Really, all these come up when I ask for a ramjet? None of these are ramjets. <laughs> uh, okay, there should be a CR2 somewhere around, uh, unless it's been renamed. Maybe it's a non ro one? I don't know. I thought I'd seen it earlier, though, but yeah, that's peculiar. Okay. Uh, so, there ought to be a ramjet option, that is a thing, but that'll still get you to about Mach 5, Mach 6-ish. There's no scramjet. So, we're still doing most of it with the rocket engine, and then if you put the jet engines, the rocket engine has to push those along as well, which causes more problems, and we've made this about as light as we can. So, that is the question, whether we can actually get any benefit from the jet engines or the jet mode of a rapier engine for that matter. Uh, the problem with the rapier engine is that it guzzles so much hydrolox. We'll see that in the next video. We'll go to the rapier engine. Somebody suggested using two rapier, uh, not rapier, saber M's. So we'll two, use two saber M's. I think that'll be the configuration and we'll see whether that can work out for us. Now the Skylon uses saber M's uh, that's the size for them, and it uses two. So, we'll see, but the Skylon has that nice shape. 
it doesn't have as much drag as this body is going to have. So one thing we can look into is finding bodies that aren't going to have all this drag. It'd be super helpful if our shielded procedural tank, which we could shape into that shape, well, not that one, this one, this is the only one that has a uh, good skin max temp. It'd be really helpful if this one could have a lighter weight than the currently more than 10% dry mass that it has. So we may have to reconfigure this <laughs> in the configuration files to have that property. And in that case, uh, maybe we can have a higher dry mass, but we'll make up for it by having less, less drag. So that'll be a goal maybe. So we may get into configuration file madness eventually with these SSTOs, but here's one SSTO for you at least. I felt bad about not having an SSTO for you. So this can get to orbit, can it carry payload? It doesn't seem like it. Uh, if you want to make suggestions about how to improve upon it, by all means, uh, the main thing I would probably do is reduce the drag. And yeah, we could talk about that. We could talk about uh, other things. I might think of something like you, you never expect things like the landing gear uh, weighing like nine tons suddenly or something like that. And yeah, we'll think about it. All right. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.